check this out. People I used to run with, they just wasn't just any people. This was my family. This is my brothers and my cousins. You know what I mean? My nieces. This, this is all my family, my blood family. Yo, I got half a generation locked up. I'm serious. Locked up. Ain't nobody but kids out there on the streets now. This is what y'all doing. Y'all think it stops? I already told you what happened to my son. This is a cycle that keep going, that keep growing. You know what I'm saying? It don't only grow, it, it grow legs. You know what I'm saying? It grow legs and keep it moving. But here y'all is, y'all got a chance to stop all of it. But don't want to. Because you still want to be this G. Let me ask y'all something. What has gangs done positive for your community? If you could tell me one thing positive that gangs done for your community, I'll drop this mic and leave. Anybody? Just put your hand up and grab a mic. Anybody? No, it ain't nobody going to put their hand up because can't none of y'all say a gang done anything positive for your neighborhood. So why would you want to be in something that's going to destroy you and the people around you? And for all y'all who's already in this, man, it ain't late. It is not too late, man. Don't wait till you like me, man, 34 years old, thinking you still a young boy out there playing with the young boys. Is this what's going to happen to you? One of them out of control young boys going to roll up on you and light you up, man. And, I, I, and you know what? You're going to be laying in that hospital bed, crying. You know who the first person going to come to your mind? He the first person, but you know who the second person? Me. Because I sat here and told you. Yeah. And I sat here and told you what's going to happen to you. And if you don't think it's going to happen to you, keep playing in them streets. I guarantee you when I get in contact with one of these teachers, oh, you know such and such, he ain't believe you. They just killed him another day. I had two females that used to be in my crew. They was twins. Yo, y'all female? Yeah, female. I want to ask y'all something about y'all females here. How do you get in the gang? Young lady, what'd you say? Gang rape. That's what y'all females have to do to get in the gang. You got to let 30, 40 dudes jump up on top of you. You think I'm joking? Oh, you see one of these females around here in that gang? Ask her what she had to do. Let me tell you something about a gangster or a drug dealer. The last thing he wants you to do is be taking up his time. I'm serious. That's the last thing he wants you to do is taking up his time. So if he keep coming to you and you keep telling him no, he gonna give up and move on. Because he see you as a strong person. He don't want that. He want that weak-minded joke that he gonna get that gun to. He gonna go out there and do what he told him to do. That's what they look for. The weakest link. But you have run out here with that flag on, swear you respect it. And you ain't got no respect. You ain't got no respect. Let me make it clear to y'all. It's a difference between respect and fear, man. People only fear you because you down with a a misguided organization, man. You know what I'm saying? You down with some people who done terrorized people for over 30, 40 years because they wear a certain color. That's what they scared of. Or that's what they respect. They don't respect you. You can believe that. And I done took so many lives, man, did so many bad things to people. This is what God got me doing. Helping y'all. Yeah, let me tell you something about my mother, man. 
I had the most beautiful mother in the world. I did not respect her one bit. I'm serious. My mother was always sick. She was a diabetic. You know, I, I can't even remember a whole week where she wasn't in the hospital. I'm serious. Always in the hospital. Always in the hospital. At the age of 49 years old, my mom went into a diabetic coma. Two days after that, she had a stroke and was brain dead. I was on the other side of town doing what I do. But as I'm over there doing what I do, they called me to the hospital. Yo, when I stepped in that hospital room, man, and seen my mother laid up there, she couldn't talk. She, she wasn't even there because they said she was brain dead. So really all I was looking at was a shell, man. I couldn't even tell, I couldn't even ask for forgiveness for this lady because she ain't hear me. This is what you do to the people who love you, man, when you out there doing this. It's not right, man. It is not right, man. Because I'm going to tell y'all right now, that was the hardest thing I ever had to do, man, was turn that machine off on my mother. I done had my altercation with plenty of people. But that was the hardest thing I had to do in my life, man. I had to give away the one person that truly loved me, man. You know, y'all sit around here disrespecting your mother, calling her names and things like that. When she gone, man, she gone. And I'm trying to help you and make sure you don't be standing over no casket crying your eyes out because you can't get her back and you didn't get a chance to say what you wanted to say to her. Take this opportunity now. Because trust me, you ain't going to want to feel that, man, when they come to you. Right now, I'm pressed for time, man, and I want to hear what y'all got to say. So I'm going to take some questions right now. Y'all be feel free to ask me anything you want to about my life, man, because that's what I'm here for. How about the two girls you were talking about? Oh, I never finished that, did I? Okay, yeah, because y'all made me jump on my mama. I'm serious about my mama. All right. I used to roll with two twins named Yadi and Sadia. They were two females, okay? But one day, they stole my car, man. And just went for, not steal it, steal it. They just took my car without my permission. And went for a little ride. But they ended up on the other side of the town in enemy territory. Decided to jump out the car. Well, they were going to jump out the car and go inside a corner store. Between the both of them, they had over 80-something bullets plugged in them. Somebody pulled up on the side of the car and just emptied on the car. Because they thought I was in the car. That's what I'm trying to tell you about being responsible, man. Because you don't only put yourself in danger, you put your family and your friends in danger, man. Like I told you, they come at the closest thing you love. They knew that was the closest thing to me. You know what I'm saying? So I just gave up them two girls' lives, man, from all the negativity I was portraying on the streets, man. Any? How old you was when you killed your first person? I told you I was 13 years old when I joined the gang. You still think about it? I still think about a lot of things. Yep. Let me tell you something about that, man, situation, man. Once you go to that route, man, ain't no coming back from that, man. Ain't no coming back from that. Or you can try to sleep it off or try to put it in the back of your mind. You still going to have them feelings about what you've done, man. That's something you got to live with. Oh, you didn't use the bathroom. <laughs> Overhead. All right. How I use the bathroom? I have a bag on where I have to urinate in, and I have a, another bag where I have to do the other thing in. I'm serious. This is, this is what happened to you when you get shot, man. Like I told you, I got shot with a 12 gauge and 380. When I got hit with that gauge, man, it took, it took my uh, bottom half off. Yo, one leg was still attached in my pants. The other leg was gone. Yeah. 
This is what y'all got to look forward to out there playing with all these guns, man. Oh, what you think when you get hit with that bullet, it's going to stop? Nah, man. And ain't none of y'all qualified to be out here shooting a gun. That's why you have so many innocent people out here getting shot. Because you a kid and out there, come on, man. It's such a sad situation, man, because half of them been brainwashed by these jokers that they running for in this gang, man. They don't understand. It ain't about them. It's about him, man. It's about him. And let me ask y'all something. This is something I want to get to y'all little cats that's out here in this gang, man. Honestly, do you think the homie care about you, man? No, he don't, man. Because if he cared about you, he wouldn't put that gun in your hand, man. To go out there. That's the end of your life, man. That's the end of your life. He putting you in a trap. And why he putting you in that trap? Because he know the consequences of them actions, man. That's why he don't go do it. Because he know what he, what he going to get out of it. Life. Life. That's why he put the gun in your hand and let you take a chance on getting 10, 20 years. Let me ask, you, ask yourself, is it worth it? As she said, man, my time is limited. But hey, if I can't leave y'all with nothing, man, leave you with this. Life is your own choice, man. You have control of your own life, man. Can't nobody tell you what to do. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody force you to do nothing. Stand up for yourself, man. Be a man for a change. Stop falling behind that dummy, man. Okay, and my other question is, um, how much surgeries have you had in all? How much surgeries have you had in oh, all? Oh, man. Surgeries? I stopped counting at number 12. I'm serious. After my 12th surgery, I stopped counting. I was in the hospital for two years and three months. You know why I talk about prices? You know how much my hospital bill was? I'm serious. Y'all ain't going to believe it. Oh, you way short, baby girl. My hospital bill was almost $2 million. I'm serious. I was in the hospital for, for two years and three months. Between the hospital and the rehabilitation to learn how to use a wheelchair, it was almost $2 million. Do you think I had $2 million to pay for it? No, I didn't. The taxpayer paid for that. People like your mom and dad who are out here playing taxes, they paid for that. You know what? Let me explain something to y'all females. I met a female pilot a couple days ago. No, she not the, the lady that walked down the aisles. She the lady that fly the plane. The captain. The captain. <laughs> yeah. I was amazed. I never seen a female pilot. Yo, she sat down and told me the struggle she had to do to get where she at. You know how she got where she was at? Anybody? Hard work, man. Hard work. She refused not to be a captain. That's what she always wanted to be. A captain of a, a flying an airline. And she, she did it. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Y'all can do anything you want to, man, if you'll just apply yourself more. You know, and stay away from these negative things, man. You can be anything you want to be. Like I told you when I first see you, I don't see a bunch of killers and murderers. 